Hey guys, this is Mike with AAR Customs, better known as ILO Automotive Restoration. I am working on the 289 engine out of the Sunbeam Tiger that is currently in, in my shop for a full frame off restoration. Well, ground up restoration. The car doesn't have a separate frame, it's a unibody. Anyway, uh, the engine was built by another engine builder, and the um, guy didn't know what he was doing. I, uh, I took it apart, and uh, it had all kinds of issues with it. So I uh, discussed it with the owner, and uh, he decided to uh, go ahead and let me go through it. So I completely took the engine apart, and... Uh, in replacing some of the bad parts, believe it or not. Brand spanking new engines, never been fired, never got off the engine stand. Um, and they had already screwed it up. Very dirty assembly. Uh, machine work looked good. I mean, everything is mic'd out okay. Uh, machine work looked fine, but it was very dirty install. Um, and it just, it, it tore up the bearings and uh, just a bunch of mismatched parts and just okay that said we're going to uh we're gonna go ahead and uh we're going through this thing so i got the block all cleaned back up and uh ready to uh ready to put together now I, like i said i went ahead and mic'd everything and everything looks good um with the micrometer now i don't have a dial board gauge i worked at um, three different speed shops in back in the 80s and 90s and of course um, all the engine builders we always used a dial bore gauge to to uh, check the clearances I don't have that here um, I don't like using snap gauges because they're just too inaccurate I've had good luck I know some people are gonna roll their eyes when I say the word um, plastic gauge but I've had really good luck with plastic gauge, and I've also checked um, engines that have been checked with dial board gauges, and uh, plastic gauge is pretty darn close. So when you don't have anything better, it's better than just closing your eyes and bolting everything together. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and mock up the crankshaft here, and uh, anybody that's curious on how plastic gauge works, I will show you. Oh, also, let's see if I can get this. Uh, camera to turn around oh. uh, okay, you have to bear with me with these uh, high-tech video tools um, ie cell phone uh, anyway back in the day if you old timers out there built this built some engines you'll remember a company called Clevite Clevite was a engine parts manufacturer and they were known for making some of the best engine bearings on the planet um, specifically their tri-metal bearings which were um, called clevite 77 bearings if you look for clevite 77 bearings today they're a little hard to find but with a little research and knowing what you're looking for you can see or you can find that Clevite 77 bearings are still being manufactured today, just under the name of the par new parent company that owns Clevite, uh, Mala. It's a German company, very high quality parts. You guys are into the European uh, thing, specifically uh, Volkswagens, Porsches, things like that. Uh, you'll recognize the Mala brand. But anyway, they own Clevite now. Um, Clevite tri-metals which are copper lead and I believe tin um, or maybe it was the steel backing either way but they uh, they were the cats in the aisle back in the day um, and they're still being manufactured they're considered if you look for them they'll be listed as uh, clevite tri-metals now um, there are aluminum bearings out there clevite aluminum bearings um, I'm not a big fan of those for the early engines, um, just personal preference, I guess. Um, like I said, we have the tri-metals here, so 
I'm gonna go ahead and get this all set up and then I'll uh, I'll come back you want to oh also be before you do any of this make sure that um, your parts are clean enough to eat off of I know us mechanics will eat off of a dirty table but let's just say clean enough for our babies to eat off of um, crankshaft make sure that all the oil galleys are cleaned out with a brush and um, a good solvent I like to use brake clean doesn't leave a residue behind um, same with the block make sure that it's just absolutely dirt free no dust nothing just this is a surgical area so I'll be right back okay guys now what I've managed to do here is um, I got the crank sitting in here dry now you want to make sure that you don't use any oil because that oil will take up um, the clearances that you're trying to measure so you gently set the crankshaft in the block don't turn it I always set it up to where um, we're facing up we don't have any of the oil holes directly up because um, that's where you're going to want to put your plastic gauge now the plastic gauge is this tiny little green green stuff here um, now it comes in different colors the um, colors change depending on the thickness that you're trying to measure in this particular case this is um, what we got here. Oh, that's the metric side. No wonder I couldn't read it. <laughs> One thousandths to three thousandths. Okay, and there it says red is for two to six, blue four to nine. We want the measurement we're looking for is going to be in this range. So, you just take a uh, regular old pair of scissors, cut off a little piece. You don't need a lot. Like I said, it's kind of hard to see, but you see that little, that little guy right there. Oh, got some fuzz on my crank. <laughs> he said fuzz on his crank. One on each journal, right up on top. Then you're going to take your uh, main caps, you're going to put them on, and we're going to torque them down. And then I'll be right back. But remember, do not, do not turn this crankshaft. Okay, guys. So the main caps had been torqued to spec, 65 foot-pounds in this case, for small black Ford. Um, then you gently remove them. Don't want to rock them around too much. Try as easy as possible to get, get them off so you don't um, alter the, the plastic gauge. Now what's going to happen is, is when you tighten them down, tighten the main caps down, uh, it's going to squish the plastic gauge and it, depending on the clearance in there depends on how much the plastic gauge squishes out so the wider the plastic gauge the tighter the clearance the narrower the wider the clearance um, and then how you measure that is is plastic gauge comes in this little paper sleeve it's got these little uh, marks on it. I cut off a chunk of it. So if you see there, they're listed anywhere from one thousandths up to three thousandths. And we're going to be somewhere in that um, 
in that range. Kind of hard to see here, but where you can kind of see it's smashed out. So you take you take your little chart here and you line it up. And I know it's kind of hard to see with the camera, but I've already checked it. And we are between one and a half thousandths and two thousandths. So it's not quite, let's see if I can get it to focus. It's a little wider. It's a little wider than two. But not quite one and a half. So this is where plastic gauge is kind of a guesstimate. You know, if you had a dial board gauge, then you could take it all the way down to the tenth of a thousandth. In this case, I'm going to guess we're at, you know, a thousandth plus seven tenths, um, which puts us in spec. We're on the high side of the spec. I don't think I would be comfortable with it much wider than this, but I am comfortable with it where it's at. So in this case, plastic gauge is a good thing when you don't have the um, bore gauges to, uh, to use it. So it's better than nothing. There's another. really close to two so this one might be like thousands eight tenths but we're okay I'd like for it to be around you know as close to one and a half as we could but this is a um, an original engine this is a standard crankshaft that's been polished and mic'd and this engine has never uh, never spun a bearing, so that's pretty uh, pretty rare in this day and age to find a uh, fifty what is that fifty five year old engine that's uh, still got standard crankshaft in it, but. Uh, this Tiger never flipped the odometer over. I think uh, the, the uh, owner said right around 90,000. So the engine did get bored 30 over, but the uh, crank looks pretty good. I like the clearances where they're at for the mains. We will do the same for the rods when we uh, before we install the rods. Uh, but for the time being, we're uh, we're well well on our way to a uh, good, reliable build.